All right, so now that I have the bar on here that's kind of holding this flat and stretched out, it actually moved a little bit. So I'm going to double check my measurement on the paper right now. All right, I now picked up a sixteenth of an inch somewhere, but we'll find out if that's going to work in a second. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do my own little directions that it doesn't tell me about. I'm going to make a light pencil mark right here. And I'm going to make a light pencil mark right here. So that when I pick this whole monstrosity up and bring it over to the door, I can uh, just put it right on the door and see how it lines up. Yep, don't like the way that looked. So let's try putting the paper template right up there and see what we get. Now this wouldn't be so bad except for the fact that the, temp the uh, paper template, if it's not pulled taut, it's going to give you a different dimension. So what I'm getting right now for a dimension is, you know, if I pull it taut, then if I take the slack out of it is what I'm saying. It's not too bad, but I think at this point we can probably fudge it. See, the problem is also I'm dealing with this narrow area I'm trying to hit the very center of, as opposed to this nice wide area, which is where I wanted to mount it. But the bar's not wide enough for that, as we already discussed, so we don't have much choice other than to uh, deal with what we've got. So I'm tempted at this point to just use the end of this template to drill one hole and then actually screw the bar on there with one screw, level it, and then use the actual plastic end mounts here on the bar to actually, uh, uh, as a guide for the other screw holes. Because this template is just not making me happy. So if you get what I'm saying, I'm gonna use, I tape this side down and I'm not going to worry about if this is level or whatever because as long as this is vertical, which as long as this line's centered between the width of this thing I'm drilling into here, the rail, then it should work. And I'm going to drill... Well, I can actually... I should be able to get away. There's enough play and slop in this bar that I'll be able to drill both holes and still be able to level this thing. So... One last check to make sure that's the height I want. I think it's going to work out. Uh, I'm a tall guy, but the rest of the kids and the wife are more normal sized people. So I will uh, not put this any higher than that. I don't want to put it any lower because then it starts to interfere with your access to uh, getting your hand in here. So I don't, really don't want it any lower than that. And I'm kind of using also a, as a guide, I'm kind of using the, the little picture they have right here. You can see there's the little slide thing that uh, there's a solid plastic on this one. It's an older style, but that's basically a little trap door right there. And you can see they've got it just uh, um, about four or five inches up from that. So I think that'll work. Let's drill some holes. All right, so I've drilled my two holes. So now plan is to take the template off. Oh, I ended up mounting it a little higher than I actually started. There's my original. Eh, that's about a quarter of an inch. Hey, what's a quarter of an inch between friends? All right, so I can take my little pencil marks off. Just wash these right off, and no one will know that I put it up higher than I intended to. All right. So now, we can ditch these too. A little bit of saliva to get those off. Okay, now we will screw on that end. Okay, I started to screw it on and then I realized that the screw is going to bottom out uh, before it tightens. So I have to make that hole go all the way through that second channel there. All right, so now I've mounted this one, this side. So now I can just slip the handle in there like that. And let's see. And come out here to this side. 
And what I'll be able to do is I'll be able to hold this into the position where the bar is level or parallel to that bottom line, as I was mentioning before, and then uh, use the actual handle to guide my drill bit. All right, so now I've got the bar leveled. And if I give it a good glance, it looks like it's pretty parallel. Enough so that you can't see with the eye. That if it is out, you can't tell with the naked eye. And so now I've positioned this exactly where I want to, and I already started a, uh, what I did was I held it in position, and then I started a drill hole right there. So now what I can do is uh, I'll do the same thing with the top one, and then I'll move this out of the way and finish drilling the holes. Okay, so now I've installed these two screws. I haven't tightened them down all the way yet because I have one last thing I need to do, and that is I need to install, I need to drill the pile of holes, install the screws on the back side that actually hold this bar in position, because right now you can see I could just slide it right out. All right, so I had my temporary pencil marks on there. You can see, so if I line that one up, you'll see that that one right there if I line it up so that one's just barely visible, this one's just barely visible. So I've got my width exactly where I want it, but those temporary marks, I don't want to use those to position it in its final position because you'll notice on this side, I've only got about that much of the uh, bar in there inserted. And on this side, if I take it out, you'll see that there's almost twice as much. So what I want to do is I want to split the difference and have about the same amount of bar inserted on each side. Uh, or maybe, since most of the pulling action is going to happen on this side, maybe what I want is I want it uneven, but I want maybe the meteor part, the part that gets inserted further, on this side. Yeah. Yeah, that's the ticket. Sounds good to me. Let's try that. Come on. All right. So I'll insert this in here, this side. Because the, the the less that this is inserted in, the more flimsy this connection is. And this is where most of the the action is going to be happening. I foresee it even being pulled near the middle or more near this edge here. So I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go with that. So what I can do now is I can, since I know my pencil marks are right where they should be, I can actually take this whole thing off now, turn it over on the floor, line up my lines there, make sure they're lined up, and then drill my pilot holes for those other screws. All right, so now I'm down here on the floor, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide this in. You can just see my pencil mark on there so that the pencil mark is just exposed. And then I'm going to flip it over. Actually, it just occurred to me there's no reason I can't flip this bar over and have the pencil marks on the back side. Duh. That'll be working better. All right. Yeah. The reason why I like that better is because I don't have to worry about this shifting position when I go to roll it over after I get the pencil mark lined up. Now, my mark is just barely visible. I know that's the, uh, that's the spot I want to be on this one. So now that I've got the hole drilled, I'm going to put a screw in to keep it from moving. Now we want to try and remember, this is the side that's inserted further. This is the side that you can see is only going to have about that much inserted into it. So this is the side that we want to be the hinge side of the door. All right, so now that hole is drilled, and then we're going to insert the screw. Now I can easily tell which side is the side that's not inserted very far. This is the side that's only inserted about this far, because you can see I can actually wiggle this quite a bit, which is not good. But it's what we're going to have to live with because of the fact that this bar is not quite long enough for this door. This side, you can see it. It's much more rigid. So this is the this is the side we want to have on the uh, side of the door where we might have more force exerted. Now, I would advise when you're putting these screws in to uh, use a hand Phillips screwdriver rather than my power one here. But I did put this on the lowest torque setting, and I very gingerly, because it's a variable speed, tighten these screws so that they're snug and no more than that because you don't want to strip them out of this uh, thin aluminum that they're threaded into and that my friends is actually 
sturdier than I thought it would end up being once I got all the screws in. So it's something I can live with. And it's actually, right now it seems sturdy enough that we could even pull the door closed with it instead of having to reach in here and deal with this one. But I'm still going to uh, warn the kitties that I would prefer that they did not use it in that manner. So if I open the door now and I disengage the slider. Uh oh, hey. Okay, anyways. This is what this is really supposed to be here for. It's actually just here for pulling this closed. Now you still gotta use the uh, crazy latch deal they have here because of the way this is made. They don't have this handle on the inside. But anyways, uh, what we're looking for is we're looking for when you want to close this door, you can see before we put the bar on there, you had to kind of grab this thing and it didn't really work out that well. It's kind of cumbersome. This, you can see you can grab it here. Voila. Oh, mama's gonna like this, I think. Till the kids rip it off, but you know, at least she'll have some reason to scream at them. 